When it comes to teens' social media use, another big concern among public health experts is the impact of hours of scrolling on the developing brain and the extent that it may be contributing to the mental health crisis among young people. So let's unpack it. Joining us now, America Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omer Awan. Dr. Awan, I know if I spend too much time online and it happens a lot, I feel it. I feel drained, distracted, sometimes down, and my brain, I hope, is fully formed. So what is this doing to our teens? It's having a real profound effect on teens, and we're honestly only beginning to understand the effect of social media on the teen brain. What we do know is, is that the teen brain and adolescent brain is growing very rapidly, particularly certain areas like the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. And these areas are responsible for decision-making, emotional regulation, controlling impulses. So we also know that social media and these areas are very susceptible to the effects of social media. So obviously the more teens and adolescents are on social media, that means that these areas are getting stimulated. And that means that this is going to affect teens and adolescents' ability to potentially make important decisions, uh, regulate their emotions, and even control impulses. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. We honestly are just learning about this because it's relatively new. So I think we have to really pay attention to this. And as parents and as physicians and public health experts, we have to really be concerned about you know, the sheer amount of social media use and what it's doing, not only to mental health, but this we're talking about physical health now with structural changes to the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I literally was talking to my best friend about this when I was driving in today on the phone and talking about how we both feel like we're addicted to our phones and we don't want to be. Tell us more about the recent study in pediatric research that found the more parents use devices or are watching screens around their kids, the higher the chances their kids' use could become a problem. Yeah, this is deeply concerning, Maritza, because I also use social media. And of course, I have kids as well. And I'm concerned about my own use because this study, you know, very poignantly showed that the more that adults are on social media, that predicts and that is highly associated with the amount of time that their own kids are on social media and, and not just social media, but problematic social media use, which means that they're not able to quit social media when they want to or that it's affecting their ability to do well in school, things like school. So, you know, this really underscores the importance of parents being role models, like parents really taking uh, note of what they do. We often are very quick to put the blame on teens and adolescents on our own kids about, you know, being on social media for three or four hours. But we have to really look at ourselves and see how much time we're on social media as parents or as adults, because that's translating very directly to the amount of time that they're on social media. So this modeling of behavior as parents is very important and very important for us to consider our own use before we sort of, you know, put the blame and point the finger at our own kids. Now I've seen some online influencers suggest actually having like business hours for social media. Like if the sites shut down at 6 p.m. every night, we actually just, you know, talk to each other like we used to. I know that I'm guilty of this. This is probably not a realistic solution because not everybody works a nine to five job. But I, one of my other friends, he's very diligent about setting his own limits around how much he uses Instagram. So what are some of these solutions that all of us can find to help us force us to take a step back? Well, first of all, I think as parents, we have to start communicating transparently with our kids. And it's amazing, Maritza, how many parents don't do that. We have to have these difficult and tough conversations with our kids to understand why is it that we're using social media? How can we harness the strengths of social media while mitigating the risks of social media? The other aspect of it is kind of similar to what you just suggested, you know, sort of negotiating our time with social media. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to, you know, at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. when we're eating dinner, just take, you know, two or three hours where we're off social media. We're able to have in-person interactions and be present in the moment and form those important social connections that are so crucial for, you know, lifelong development and quite frankly, networking that's important professionally. And then I think the last part of it is, mm -hmm. you know, consider turning off notifications. You know, when we start to see likes, comments, this feeds into the addictive nature of social media where we're constantly checking social media, spending hours on social media. And this results in social media having an autonomy and power over us. So by turning off notifications, 
we regain that autonomy over social media. And I am so reliant on my watch, Dr. Rowan, but I took it off over the weekend and I didn't get any of the notifications and I have to say, it was pretty refreshing. <laughs> America Tonight medical <laughs> contributor, Dr. Omar Rowan, thank you so much for joining us and for those uh, great tips and insight, we appreciate you.